students good morning welcome to the lectures on controlled release drug delivery system by kaushika patel assistant professor department of pharmaceutical technology from lg institute of pharmacy ahmedabad we have already started with the online lectures of b farm semester 7 of subject named novel drug delivery systems in that we started with controlled release drug delivery system in the first lecture so i already explained you what are the concepts of different drug delivery systems in the novel drug delivery systems what is the conventional formulation what do you understand by immediate release profile and what do you understand by modified release profiles all this release profiles and what are the differences between them we have understood in the first lecture so today in our second lecture we will go in detail about crdds that is controlled release drug delivery system so let's start with our session so as you can see here we are going to do the introduction of controlled release drug delivery system the topics which will be covered in this lecture will be what is the definition of crdds differences between sustained release and controlled release formulations what is the rationale of crdds advantages and limitations of controlled release profile and how to select an ideal candidate when you are designing controlled release drug delivery system so the so all the topics which we are going to cover in this lecture we are very important from the exam point of view so normally any question will start with define crdds okay so what is crdds it is a system which will deliver the drug at a predetermined rate for a specified period of time and that drug delivery can be for local action or for systemic action okay now what is the difference in local action the drug releases directly at the site of action whereas in systemic application the drug distributes via the blood circulation to all the parts of the body uniform so you can use crdds for both local action as well as for systemic action in crdds normally an encapsulated device is used and from that device the drug will release at a constant rate from that formulation and you can control the time period of the drug release which can vary from few hours to few days to months so you are designing a formulation which will release the drug at a constant rate for a specific period of time that you can decide okay now as i explained in first lecture whenever you are going for modified release profile you can have three options extended release site specific release and delayed release when you are going for extended release profile you are extending the release time period of the drug from the formulation that can be achieved by two systems either you can go for sustained release formulation or you can go for controlled release formulation so the basic objective of both this drug delivery systems is same you have to prolong the release time of the drug from the formulation so that you can reduce the dosing frequency of the formulation but then what is the difference okay so here we will understand what is the difference between srdds and crdds okay the so first important thing in sustained release we are just extending the release time period of the drug our aim is only sustaining the effect of the formulation but in controlled release drug delivery system along with the extending the time period of drug release we are maintaining constant level of drug in the blood or a particular tissue in sustained release normally the formulation contain two different parts the first part is the loading dose which behaves like immediate release formulation it releases the drug rapidly and immediately which helps to achieve 
the therapeutic concentration immediately. And then the maintenance dose will release the drug at a constant rate that helps to maintain that desired plasma concentration for a specified period of time. And that time can be normally between 8 to 12 hours. Okay, so you are sustaining the effect for maximum 12 hours or up to the most 24 hours you can go for. But in control release, what you are doing, you are designing a formulation to release that drug at a constant rate. So throughout the release profile, the rate of release of drug from the formulation will remain constant. It will not change at all. And you can define a specific period of time release that can vary from days to months. Now, third difference. So as you can see, you are having two different types of release profiles in sustained release formulation. So you get a mixed charger kinetics. The loading dose gives you first charger kinetics where plasma concentration increases with respect to time. And then the maintenance dose gives you zero order kinetics because then the drug concentration becomes constant. Okay, so mixed order kinetics is optimal. But in controlled release, you are designing the formulation in such a way that you should get constant rate zero order kinetics. So the rate should not change with respect to time. Then, whenever you are going for sustained release, Normally, we design the formulation in such a way that it releases slowly throughout the gastrointestinal tract. The mechanism to localize a drug at a particular site of action is not preferred in sustained release formulation. It releases normally throughout the gastrointestinal tract. But in controlled release formulation, you can include the methods through which you can promote the localization of drug at the actual site. That means you can get local action also as well as you can get systemic action also. Whereas sustained release preferably gives you systemic action of the drug. Then if you want to give the example, okay, then the matrix tablet which we prepare by using released recharging polymers that normally give, delivers the drug by sustained release. And if you want to go for controlled release profile, you can select osmotic drug delivery system or you can go for transdermal drug delivery system through the skin and you can achieve zero order release profile of the drug. Then you can even include the difference in the release profiles of these two drug delivery systems in your answer. So when you plot a graph of plasma concentration versus time, okay, if you compare with immediate release profile, then immediate release profile gives you a peak and trough plasma curve like this, okay, it is a bell shaped curve because concentration increases rapidly, it reaches C max and then it, uh, it declines also rapidly. So then to maintain the concentration in the absorption window or in the therapeutic range, you require second dose of the drug. When you're going for sustained release, first the concentration will increase following first order kinetic and then it becomes constant by zero order kinetic. And when you're going for controlled release, complete zero order controlled release, you get a constant release rate. Okay, so a straight line, a straight line is obtained which shows that the plasma concentration does not change with respect to Okay, now the next thing that you, that is important for any drug delivery system, that is the rationale of the drug delivery system. Okay, now since it is the first time you are understanding any drug delivery system, I will first explain you what is rational. Okay, so as you can see the spelling contains E at the end. Okay, most of the students write the spelling wrong. It is R-A-T-I-O-N-A-L-E. Okay, now what is rational? Rational is a set of logical reasons based on which you are developing any system. Okay, you are developing a new system, so there should be some logic behind that. That is the rational. What you are going to include in the rational, first, what issues you have addressed. Okay, what are the issues in the current system which you want to solve? Then, alternatives. So what alternatives you have proposed with respect to the current formulation or current system that you will consider in this new system. 
hard decisions. What decisions you have made to resolve the issues? Whatever issues you have concluded, what you will do to solve that issue? Okay. And the last is what is the criteria? What is the concept? What is the design by which you will uh, you will use to guide the decisions that you have taken? Okay. So all these things you have to include in the rationale of any system. Okay. So now. What is the rationale of controlled release drug delivery system? So we are developing this system as a modification of the immediate release or conventional formulation. Okay, so what is the rationale behind this? We are going to optimize the different properties of a drug that will be biopharmaceutical, pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic, physicochemical, all the properties of the drug you will optimize in such a way that you can utilize the drug in the formulation in a maximum possible way. So that you can reduce the side effects of the current formulation and you can control the disease in a proper way, okay, without any more side effects. And short time is required to cure the disease and you will try to reduce the dose of the drug to we, uh, to reduce the cost of the formulation and you will select the most suitable route which will be the most beneficial for the patient. So these are all the objectives or the rationale which you want to achieve through controlled release drug delivery. Okay, so what are the benefits over the existing system? The features which are absent in immediate release dosage forms like maintaining the dose in a constant absorption range predetermined release rate and site targeting, which cannot be obtained by immediate release formulation that can be achieved by controlled release formulation. How? You are going for a spatial and temporal delivery of drug. Okay, I already explained you what is spatial and temporal delivery of drug in the previous lecture. Spatial delivery means the drug will, will release directly at the specific organ or tissue. Temporal delivery means the drug uh, will be customized in such a way that the release rate and the release time of the drug at a particular site of action can be controlled. Okay. Now, next thing is the advantages of CRDDS. Now, when you are writing an answer on the rationale of any drug delivery system, its advantages automatically becomes the rationale of the system. Okay. Because whatever advantages you have, that are the objectives which we want to achieve. So you can include this applications or advantages of the system in your answer pertaining to rational of the drug delivery system also. Okay. So what are the advantages of CRDDS? We will move in the clockwise direction starting from the top. Okay. Now, whatever are the limitations of conventional formulation? which we have seen in the first lecture, those will be modified or those will be overcome by controlled release drug delivery system, okay? The first major advantage, you will get reduction in the dosing frequency. That means the number of doses will be less compared to immediate release conventional formulation. If you have three times doses or four times doses in Conventional formulation, you can reduce it to two by using controlled release formulation. Or you can even go for sustained release formulation. Then you can control the plasma level fluctuation, that is the peak and trough level that is observed in immediate release profile. So what will happen? By controlling that plasma fluctuations, you can minimize the side effects associated with a particular drug. Now, since the side effects are reduced, what will happen? You are increasing the safety margin of a particular drug, especially when you have a high potent drug, put highly potent drug in which the therapeutic range is very short. In that case, CRDDS helps you to increase the safety margin. Then, since you are utilizing the drug to the maximum level, Okay, you are preventing the peak and trough fluctuations. 
So maintenance of plasma concentration is not required um, frequently. That's why you can reduce the total amount of drug that is to be used in the treatment of a particular disease. Then, since plasma concentration is maintained constant, you can reduce the accumulation of drug in the body, which may occur in the chronic therapy. Okay, so when we're taking a drug for a long period of time, that gradually the drug will accumulate in the body. So that accumulation can be reduced compared to conventional foreign use. So, through reduction in the dose, through prevention of side effects, through reducing the dosing frequency, what, will, what you are doing, you are reducing the healthcare costs by improving the therapy. Okay, again, you can reduce the toxic effects or the adverse effects of the drug, whether you're going for local or systemic delivery. And finally, by all these points, what you are doing, you are improving the patient convenience as well as the compliance. The chances of missing the dose by the patient will be less because you have to take less number of doses. Okay, the so patient compliance will be more compared to conventional formulas. Now, what are the limitations? Okay, every coin will have two sides. So, along with advantages, there will definitely come disadvantages of any system. Okay, again, we will go in clockwise direction starting from the top. Okay. The first disadvantage there can be decreased systemic availability. Okay, now what does that mean? When we are going for imitate release profile, the drug releases completely and rapidly. So CMAX is achieved faster. The concentration increases faster and systemic availability, systemic concentration of drug is achieved very fast. But that may not be case in controlled release formulation because we are releasing the drug at a constant rate in the body. Then, second one is poor in vitro in vivo correlation. That means that suppose you have designed a formulation in the lab, it may be perfect, it is releasing the drug in a proper way. But when the same formulation is given to the patient, it may show variations in the release rate because the biological factors of the patient may affect with the release rate of the drug. Third, definitely the cost per unit will be higher because you are using costly methods, you are using costly equipment, even you are using costly polymers to control the release. So the cost per unit dose will be higher. But gradually it can be overcome because you need less number of doses. So Overall cost of the treatment may be equivalent or it may be less, but per unit cost of the formulation will be more for CRDDS. Then, retrieval of drug is very difficult in case of any emergency condition. Okay, suppose you have toxic effects or there is poisoning of drug in a particular patient or there is any allergic or hypersensitive reaction, then you cannot retrieve back the dose. You cannot stop the dosing because the dose is designed to release for a specified period of time. So for that period of time, it is going to remain in the body. In case of conventional formulation, you can skip the second dose or you can then uh, thereafter stop that drug if it is showing any uh, toxicity or side effects in the body. But that is not possible in controlled release formulation. Then there is less flexibility in adjusting the dosage regimen. Okay. Whatever design, do, the dosage form is designed, that is with respect to the normal adult dose. Okay. Now, if you have to make variation in a particular patient with respect to a particular condition, you need dosage regimen adjustment, then that is not possible for controlled release formulation. Next, dose dumping. Now, what is dose dumping? Dose dumping means due to some error or due to some fault in the designing or due to any factor, entire dose gets released from the formulation at the same time. Normally, controlled release formulation have to release the drug very slowly. But if something occurs and that entire dose is released simultaneously, it is known as dose dump. Now, why dose dumping occurs? It may occur due to some problem in the designing, okay, or due to some in vivo factors of the patient, okay, suppose you have coated the tablet and if that coating removes entirely in the beginning, then the entire dose will be released. Then due to some problem in the administration of the dose also, 
those jumping can occur. Suppose you have a sustained release tablet. Now, sustained release formulation or any modified formulation is to be taken intact. Okay, but if a patient divides the tablet into two parts, then the sustained release effect of the polymer is lost. So now the entire dose will release simultaneously when the patient will take that half drug. Okay, so dose dumping possibilities are there in controlled release drug delivery. And the last, there may be delay in the onset of action. Okay, because onset of action is onset time is achieved when the concentration enters the therapeutic range. But here in CRDJ, the drug releases slowly. So there are chances that it, the onset of action of drug in the body will get delayed. Okay. Now, the next important thing is how to select an ideal drug candidate for controlled release drug delivery system. Now we have many different drug molecules in the market. They have different therapeutic applications. They have different physicochemical properties. You cannot randomly select any drug for any drug delivery system. You have to study the drug molecule carefully first, and then you have to select a proper drug delivery system to maximize its use in the body. Okay, the characteristics of drug which are which make it's suitable for designing controlled release drug delivery system that are as below. Okay, so first, if a drug molecule is possessing moderate rate of absorption and excretion, okay, moderate, that means the rate of excretion and absorption should not be too fast or it should not be too slow, then you can use that drug for CRDDS. Okay, why? Because if drug absorption rate is too high, that means it will be very difficult to control the release rate or control the effect or prolong the effect of the drug in the bottom. And if the absorption rate is too low, then automatically it is going to provide controlled or prolonged effect in the body. You don't need to control the release rate. Automatically, that candidate will provide you prolonged effect. Then uniform absorption throughout the gastrointestinal tract is preferred. Why? Because when you are controlling or extending the drug release rate, it is required that the drug should be absorbed to all the sides of the body. Okay, suppose it is not getting absorbed in the lower intestine. Then what happens after gastric emptying? When the formulation comes in lower intestine, its absorption is reduced. So then its effect will also be reduced. Third, the drug should be preferably having dose which is small. Okay, now small dose means maximum limit is one gram. Dose should be less than one gram. Preferably it should be even less than one gram. So smaller the dose, it will be more convenient to calculate the dose for controlled release and to make a single unit for controlled release out of that drug. Then half-life. Half-life of our drug is very important. It is a time which is required for the drug to reduce to 50% of its initial concentration. Okay, so if half-life is very short, that means it is less than two hours, it becomes very difficult to control the release profile of the drug for 12 or 24 hours. It will require too much dose and it will be invisible. And if the half-life is already very long, that is, it is greater than eight hours, that means naturally it is going to provide effect for 10 to 12 hours in the body. So no need to design CRDDS for such drug. Next, whatever drug you are selecting for CD, CRDDS must be used for chronic disease only. Okay, chronic disease means the disease where you have to take the drug for a longer period of time or maybe for the lifetime like diabetes and hypertension. In such case, you need to reduce the dosing frequency to prevent the side effects or accumulation of drug in the body. If you are having acute condition like headache, then CRDDS is not going to affect. There you will require IR dose which immediately gives you effect. Okay, 
So you can select only those drug candidates which are effective in chronic condition. And last but not the least, the drugs should preferably have wide therapeutic index. Because it is very difficult to deal with narrow therapeutic index drugs, they have a very narrow absorption, a very narrow therapeutic range, and it becomes very difficult to control the release rate within that narrow therapeutic range for a longer period of time. The drugs with wide therapeutic index are preferred. Okay. So now if you are asked, what are the characteristics of drug which are not suitable for CRDDS? Okay, you may be asked the question in either way, suitable characteristics or non-suitable characteristics. Okay, so whatever are the suitable characteristics, the opposite will become non-suitable. Okay, so first, if the drug is rapidly absorbed or excreted or it is having very short half-life, then it is not preferred. Okay. In each case, examples are given in the bracket. You can write at least one example in your answer. Second, if the drug is not absorbed in the lower intestine, then it is not preferred. Okay, because two to, after two to three hours, the content gets emptied from the gastric environment, and then the rest of the time it spends in lower intestine. Okay, and colon. So absorption in the lower intestine is very important for the prolonged. Treatment. Then the drug should not be uh, having large dose, preferably more than one gram. Drug should not have very long half life, okay, greater than 12 hours, okay. Then, if you want to go for an individual dosage regimen for a particular patient and you want to adjust or titrate the dose for that patient for a particular condition, then CRGTS will not be helpful because dosage design is done based on. Normal dose, adult dose. So you cannot modify that dose in a formulation. Then, if a drug is having narrow therapeutic index, okay, or it is having accumulative property in the body, or it is having undesirable side effects when it goes beyond the therapeutic range, then such drugs are not preferred for control release. And last, if you have a drug which does not show any benefit on making an extended release profile, like greasy or folding, then there is no logic in making a C control release drug delivery system of such drug. Okay, so there should be suitable beneficial points, then only you can design a formulation. So now what are the frequently asked questions from this topic? Okay. So all these topics are very important. They are frequently asked in the exam. So definition, obviously, it will be included in an equation. Then advantages and limitations of CRGDS or sustained release formulation. This question is very frequently asked in the university exam. Then you may be asked to explain the difference between sustained release drug delivery system and controlled release drug delivery system. And third, you may be asked rational of the system or you may be asked selection of ideal candidate for CRGTS. Any of these questions can be mixed matched and they can be asked to in the exam. It is very important to read the question and understand that what is asked and based on that you have to write a proper answer. Okay, so that is it. I hope you are very much aware now regarding the controlled release drug delivery system. Okay, what is the system? Why you are designing that system? What are the objectives or rationale behind that system? Advantages, disadvantages, all the introductory topics of CRDDS we have completed. In the next lecture, what we will start with is the factors which affect the design of a drug delivery system. Okay, so all the different physical chemical properties of the drug that should be considered. Okay. When you are designing a CRDDS, that we will take in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Have a good time. Please subscribe on our YouTube channel Pharma Ignite for the more such interactive sessions. Thank you. Goodbye and see you soon.